What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily, and this video is going to be a little different than normal. Rather than reviewing a product like I usually do, I'll be talking about my experience with a service, MintSim. Now before the folks over at MintSim reached out and asked me to try their service, I really hadn't heard of them at all. MintSim is essentially a prepaid phone service similar to Cricket Wireless or Metro PCS. But rather than paying month to month, with MintSim, you save money by purchasing longer plans. They have three, six, and 12 month options, and generally speaking, the longer the plan, the more you save. But they actually have a special right now where the three month plan is the same cost as the 12 month plan. So it's a pretty solid deal if you just want to try it out rather than committing a full year. I'll obviously go more in depth with everything in just a second. But as I was researching MintSim before I started using the service, I honestly was met with some skepticism along with some interest. I pay a ton of money every month with AT&T. It's a triple digit bill with not a lot of data and I'm not making payments on a phone or anything. So I'm paying just for the service and for the cost, I'm not getting a whole lot. However, AT&T here in Las Vegas provides good LTE coverage, and I never drop a phone call either. And with these prepaid services, I was sort of expecting to not have the best coverage, especially considering I've literally never heard of MintSim before. However, between the cost and coverage, I was actually pleasantly surprised with how well MintSim performed. I've been using the service for more than a week and a half now, and I'll definitely put out an update after my first cycle of three months is up, but so far, I wouldn't be opposed to having MintSim sim as my primary carrier. So when you first purchase a mint sim plan, you're sent out a new sim card that's actually usable as a standard size, micro sim, and nano sim. You just have to punch out what size you need. Now one of the immediate requirements for me to even consider a service like this is that I had to be able to use the phone that I wanted. Luckily, my unlocked iPhone 10 was compatible, and you can use the IMEI checker on the mint sim website to see if your device works. As long as it's fully unlocked though, no matter what the device is, it should work just fine. The back of the mint sim card has your unique activation code and you'll use that on the website to activate the sim and set up your plan it was all pretty straightforward the first thing that it asks is if you want to migrate your current phone number or set up a new one and because i wanted to make some comparisons with my current at&t service i just went ahead and set up a new number beyond that though all you have to do is agree to the terms of service set up billing and account information and that's it setup is complete you don't have to call anyone or visit a store or any of that garbage it was literally like a two minute totally instant process. I went ahead and immediately swapped out my AT&T SIM card with the new Mint SIM, and I was like half expecting a delay in getting service honestly, but it connected right away with no issues as you can see up in the top left and also in the settings here on the device. And of course, I got a whole bunch of welcome and informational texts that break down some of the things you need to do to get some features enabled, which I'll also talk about in just a minute. But obviously, the first thing I wanted to do was a speed test on LTE, because that's like 95% of what I consider to be important as far as carriers go. MinSim is technically capped at 20 megabits up and down, but you can see for whatever reason, at least at home, I wasn't even breaking 5 megabits down on AT&T, while MinSim had noticeably faster speeds across the board. And this was something that really surprised me. Obviously, LTE speeds fluctuate all the time, but no matter where I was, at least here in Las Vegas, the network MinSim was on was consistently faster than AT&T. I never considered AT&T to be particularly bad in Las Vegas, but I'm definitely sort of questioning that at this point. The other important part in regards to carriers, of course, is call quality and reliability. Now, I don't personally talk on the phone really at all, but I know a lot of people do, so I have made quite a few phone calls in different areas to test things out with MintSim, and I never experienced a drop call or quality issues. I obviously live in a very populated area, and phone calls are never an issue anyway, but it was still nice to know that MintSim was equally as reliable. On the back end, MintSim has a really straightforward dashboard board that allows you to quickly check all of the important stuff, like what plan you're currently paying for and how much data you have left. You can also easily add more data to your plan if you might go over your limit. You can purchase international roaming credit for phone calls out of the country. If you're on certain Android devices, you can also set up Wi-Fi talk and text, and you can also make adjustments to the current plan if you'd like to make any extensions or fall back to a month-to-month -month basis. And this all happens instantly right through the dashboard. With any prepaid service, there's going to be some limitations, and that's true with MintSim. I already mentioned the speed cap of 20 megabits per second on LTE, but like I said, I wasn't even getting anywhere close to that with AT&T anyway. Something that is unfortunate though, is the lack of visual voicemail support on iOS, and that one definitely hurt a little bit. You also need to manually configure APN settings to enable MMS features like picture messaging and group texts, which aside from a minor inconvenience when you're first setting things up, is generally not a big deal since the instructions are pretty straightforward. So like I said at the start of the video, I've been using Mint 
haunts him for about the last week and a half, which I feel like is at least enough time to come to the conclusion that MintSim is a really promising prepaid option. Cost-wise, MintSim definitely has some of the most affordable plans, even though you might be locked in for three months at a time. As far as coverage, I know results will vary here, but in my area, LTE was very strong. Cell service was also reliable, and a lot of the time, for whatever reason, the service was somehow better than what I was paying for with AT&T. I'll be sure to update you guys at the end of my three month plan with a more in-depth breakdown of how it all went, but at the moment, I'm really pleased with MintSim, and I'm still surprised that I ended up liking it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of MintSim in the comments below. Also, be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.